Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer After the Campaign video. And for those of you who probably don't know about this series, it is a video in which we will take a look at games that have finished after their Kickstarter or GoFundMe campaigns. Basically, I'll be getting a prototype months and months ago, and then I would have played the prototype and I would have given you a review based on that. And then what I'm going to do now is, after it's all been done, it's all been shipped from China, it's going to come here as the finished product. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it and I'll give you my thoughts. Generally, I will actually have the prototype along with the game itself, but due to a lot of in-home cleaning, a lot of the prototypes have either went back to the creators or have been discarded and contained with for parts and whatnot. So we're just going to talk about the games themselves and what I remember the differences between them as far as the quality of the components and all that kind of stuff goes. And you'll have a chance to pick up any of these games that you see that you might be interested in down below, link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the games that are up here. Now these over here, you have Bad Maps, which is by Floodgate Games. You've got Alexander Campaign by Alcon Creative, as well as Ironclad, Mercenary Battleship, Iseon, and uh, Mistea, and this one's by Tabula Games, and Machina Arcana, which is by, I'm not sure actually, which I guess we'll go ahead and take a look at first. And then we're gonna have Philosophia, which is by Kajido Ergo Meeple, which is probably Latin, so I apologize by not pronouncing that correctly. Regardless, let's go ahead and bring out Machina Arcana to the table. I'll go ahead and position this right. And as you can see, this is the full finished version of the game. We got a prototype of this one, and the prototype was actually very, very nice. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. I went ahead and basically opened these guys up. I haven't played any of them except for Mistea and Bad Maps. But uh, as you can see on Mach Machina Arcana, this has got one of those, like, a raised portions here on um, this little edge here this little line here it's very nice the quality of the box is very very sturdy really really well done and the back here is going to have the components it's going to have what you get in it as well as the story and how many players and all that it plays with it's actually really really well done this is what i like to see in the back of a box i like to see what comes in the game a little bit of a scenario or story of what the game is going to be about and what you're going to get inside of it along with the player count and all that good stuff. The artwork is phenomenal as well, just like it was previously. I'll go ahead and take the lid off of the box here and we'll basically do a little unboxing while I kind of discuss it. So we have a baggie here. This is a Machine Arcana baggie. Really nice, high quality baggie. One of the nicest and high, high quality, most high quality baggies you could probably get for a game. The rule book for the game, which is really nice as well. Full color, full detail with all the pictures illustrating how to do all the setups, the different phases of the game. This rule book was very nice to go through in the prototype and it is just put together very, very nicely in this one with all the images. So really, really impressed with that as well. Here is a bunch of the boards for the game. They have front and back. So there's a ton of different content in the game that you're going to be getting. And I was really impressed with this as far as the prototype went. These are even nicer, higher quality, thicker boards. We can bend them, but they're not going to crack or bust. They, they go pretty good without trying to actually get too bad with them. And they actually come back up. So they're very nice, really nice, high quality, thick boards. Then we're gonna have our player boards here. These things are also very nice as well. They're gonna have your different stats on them and you're also gonna have your explorer as well, which is, they're really nice. They actually are uh, double thick, so that way you can actually place your tokens inside. And the back is just gonna have the main artwork for the game, which is nice, it's not just a black background. So that is a high, high quality aspect as well. And then of course, this is the scenario portion that talks about how the monsters and function and whatnot as well, which is pretty cool. And these are all really Really, really well done. All of the cardboard is nice. Now this game doesn't come with miniatures, so instead you're going to be getting standees. Now I don't know if that's a thing for you or not, what you'd prefer, but regardless that is what is in the game. I went ahead and punched these guys out and I put them together so you'll be able to see them standing up. And all of the standees are high quality little cutouts of the game. So they're nice and thick little cardboard cutouts. They pop on and pop off. And these things are nice too because they're bendable. So I was very, very uh, impressed with these guys here. There's a ton of other tokens. They're about as thick as the main boards, not the player boards and scenario board. And then you're gonna get a ton of high quality cards as well. These are very glossy and nice. So they went and above and beyond for what they needed to do for all of this stuff, very good. Uh, these are all the tokens, they're all wooden, they're all nice quality, as well as the die. They are all custom cut etched uh, die, really, really nice. 
So if you had heard about Machina Arcana or had had some interest in them, but were worried about the quality of the game itself, very, very nice. I have a review up, obviously, so I won't discuss too much about the game because you can go and watch that review down below, link in the description. But overall, this game is very nice. The insert, I guess, is probably the cheapest part about the game because it's just thin plastic, but it does what it needs to do. So I'm not going to go ahead and give it too many points off as far as that goes. But everything as far as the game goes, components wise, is very nice. Uh, as long as you don't mind the standees as opposed to box fart, as opposed to the miniatures. Machina Arcana, and this is by, let me go ahead and look. Uh, I'm guessing it's just by Machina Arcana. Yeah, Cooperative Steampunk Horror Adventure. Doesn't have the title, doesn't have the name of the company, which you would hope to have seen on the box somewhere. So maybe another little ding there as well. Let's go ahead and hide this one. Next game, Bad Naps by Floodgate Games. Floodgate has made things like Sagrada, um, what else have they made recently? The Colonies game, Star Colonies. And this one here is a game of pirate programming. So you're basically programming to move your characters around. I got a prototype of this game and it was fairly nice. It was okay, you know, did what it needed to do. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one here. I wouldn't opened it. I didn't take too much of a lengthy look at it, but I do like the size of the board and I like the quality of it. It's got a front and back side. All of the pieces, while not as thick as Machina Arcana, are very nice and they work very well. All the little wooden components function very well. They're pretty, pretty good here. Let's see. These are a little thinner than the big plastic or the big uh, cardboard chest that you're replacing on the board here, but you're not going to use these as much. You get a bunch of player cards. Let's see here. They are also glossy. They are a little thinner but high color, very, very pretty, very luminous, uh, very luminous, I should say. And then you got your player boards as well. This game does exactly what you need it to do as far as a worker programming or a movement programming game goes. And the components are very nice as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the boards here. This board um, is going to have function, which I believe is for the, based on the number of players. And you flip it. Oh, no, that's not our players. It's whether you want to play the basic mode that you can go ahead and put whatever you want on here, or if you want to play the standard mode of the game. So you have different options. And you'll be placing cards down on the side of this board as well. High quality board, nice and thick. Very well done. Nice and easy to put this game up as well. And then for the rule book here, illustrations explain fairly well. I remember explaining, reading the rules for this game before it was on a piece of paper, and that was easy to understand as well, so this game shouldn't be too complex. As far as setup goes, the insert is just basically one of these soft cardboards. They're very standard as far as they go. Nothing super like overly like production quality here, but what is there is really nice. Bad Maps by Floodgate Games. I did a good job on the back of the box. You can see it's gonna come with everything I'd like to see. This is even better in my opinion than the uh, Machine Arcana as far as the layout goes. You see the entire board, where all the cards go, you get the example of how, what the game is like, nice illustrations, number of player counts, company, as well as every other little in piece of information you will need. And then it even says it has a haunted, expansions a haunted expansion for the caves. So very, very nice Floodgate game. Games. All right, so these are by Alcon Creative, and these are both basically from the same company. I reviewed them very, very uh, close together, and not only that, but they did their Kickstarter campaigns, and these are made in Greek, Greece, Greece. So they're going to be very interesting components. They're definitely going to be different components. Uh, the 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 process that is used, as well as the style, it's very, very unique. But you're going to have. All these player boards here, both front and back. This is, of course, Alexander's Campaign, which is one of those Roman theme style games. So these already automatically get bonus points for me just because I really enjoy them. Uh, some of these pieces are all of them are going to be a little thinner, right, than you would expect on any of the other any other games you would expect because they're manufactured, I believe, in different areas. But what is included is very nice. It works very well as far as the game goes. I really, really enjoyed this game, even though I believe it plays just uh, one to three players. And you're moving around this board here. All the components are going to be thinner. That's just how it's going to be with all the Alcon Creative stuff based on where they manufacture the game. You got a nice, beautiful illustration on the back, as well as, of course, going to have this beautiful thing here. All right, you're going to see all the map of, uh, I believe this is Rome, the Roman Empire. So very, very nice. You're going to be moving around the board here. Nice. It works. It's thinner, obviously, like I said, so expect just a lot of things to be a lot thinner. doesn't use any cards, really. All of these are going to be mid the thick cardboard, so that's just how it is. Let me see here. This, okay, so yeah, all of these are also going to have a... It's not going to be as 
as vibrant. These are going to be a little like a little darker tone to them. It's going to have a little little darker shade. The rule book here, fully illustrated. It's going to have all of the examples, but as you see, there's not as many illustrations when you go through the rule book. However, we did understand this game pretty easily. We played this the first time and we got it. We instantly played it again. Uh, the box is going to be less high, high quality, right? It's going to be thinner. Everything is going to be a little thinner with these guys here, but overall they did a very good job with it. They ex once again, the back of the box as well is explained very well. Shows all the components, everything as, as far as the components over here goes, the example of the game, the name, everything is done very well as far as marketing standpoint. Even on here, tells you the character, the names of the people who made it as well as everything you need to know. And then Ironclad, the mercenary battleship game, same format except you're going to get extra rule books for your campaign and whatnot. There is a lot of text in this game because you use a whole lot of it uh, a lot of thinner pieces thinner chits uh, you're going to get the die here instead of being the normal cut die these ones here are going to be what i believe okay these are the average die you can probably get just standardized one to six die and then this one here it looks like it is printed on so these die are going to be more pr these guys are going to be more printed on it also comes with a little miniature here which you're using a little plastic miniature and then you're also going to get uh, the board for your ship. So you'll be getting this little board for your ship that you'll be utilizing as well. So everything, like I said, is just thinner quality, but it's also, I believe, manufactured a different way. None of this is unplayable. It works very well. Everything is illustrated very nicely. This uh, looks like the printing is definitely a little more vibrant on this one, but it still has that same feel, a little less gloss and some extra little stuff to talk about. Regardless of both of these I reviewed as well, and you can find reviews of them on my channel, link in the description below, along with, of course, Bad Maps. Another really good job explaining the game. This is a really nice example of how to do a back of a box so you can see everything very well. So very, very impressed with their ability to communicate what their games entail. All right, Philosophia. This game came out really quickly. The prototype was excellent and very, very impressive. Philosoph Philosophia is basically a game in which you're going to be one of the philosophers back in the Greek and Roman Empire, and you're attempting to kind of congregate the masses, make them join you, and like learn your style of philosophy, whether it be like sophism or... Well, I'm not going to get into all that because that would take a long video, but regardless, you're going to be moving around the board collecting people to try and teach them your idea, your state of mind, and your philosophy. And uh, this game is really, really high quality. I got to open it up earlier. It plays has the two different sides of the map based on the number of players in the game. Very well done. Very easy to understand where everything goes and where you're going to be going on the map. It's going to have this big, illustrious rule book as well. There is not as many as, as far as illustrations go, but what is there for the important parts is what matters, exists. Actually, yeah, this one actually has more. It looks really good. Explains all the different components and pieces and whatnot. Has the philosophers and what they believed in. So you get a bunch of extra historical, like uh, interesting historical context to the game. The player boards, let's check them out here. Okay, definitely thicker. These are going to be more, more on the Machina Arcana level of thickness. Very, very thick, very sturdy, will last a long time. And then I believe they're also front and back as well. They are. They are all front and back. They use, this game uses up a lot of its space to make sure you can, you get, you get uh, every, everything you can get for what you're paying for. So a lot of different replayability. Syllogism cards. Also thick, nice. They're thinner cards. Uh, also, yeah, a little thinner here as well. A lot of cards in this game. The tokens here as well are going to be your average standard uh, tokens. And these are going to be all well done. Front and back, which is very, very nice. The basic insert, like I said, just like most games, is going to be this like little thin cardboard insert where you can put everything in. And don't forget, we're also going to get miniatures to the game. Miniatures are very, very well detailed, very nice. You'll be placing them on the board and moving them around. These are going to be basically your characters and also these thick boards as well. So everything, very, very nice. Thick cardboard, thick tokens. Wooden sh these wooden pieces are very nice as well. You'll be placing them on the board. I really, really enjoyed this game personally. It's another one of those games that I really like the theme of, so I'm, I'm probably a little biased on it. But overall, really, really well done. All of the artwork and illustration is beautiful. And the board is very nice and historically accurate as well, which I really do appreciate. And of course, the front of the box, beautiful. It's also got its raised text and, and, and some other little things that are raised, as well as the 
uh, back of the box here. And the back of the box is going to have, it does a pretty good job. It actually explains everything that's in the game. It shows the different characters. Uh, it's also got all the contents of it. Uh, yeah, it looks really good as far as the number of players. I think it's just going to be on the main side of the box. So it's just kind of a little more minimalist on this, but it does give you all the detail you'll need. I'd probably like to see a little bit more about the game than just the one or two sentences that are on here. I actually prefer to see a lot more. But overall, it does a very good job. Philosophia, it, Dare to be Wise, a game by... Oh, let's try this again. Cog, Kajito Ergo Meeple. I'm going to look that up and see what that means. My last two games up to talk about. I got two big ones here, Miss Thea and I say on. Miss Thea, this is my, these are my tabula games and they play two to five players each. And what's unique about these, there's a lot of things unique about these, but we're gonna go uh, rather quickly with these bit bad boys because there's a whole lot in these. Uh, first of all, it has a lot of little interesting, unique surprises on it. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's a unique spoiler for Iseon, the game that's coming up. So whenever you get at one of their games, you get to see kind of what's coming up next. All their games work together in some way. So if you have one, if you have Iseon and you have Mistea, you can actually play a unique style game mode. All of the pieces, all the boards are very, very thick, very, very nice, very, very well illustrated. They did a very good job of this game. It's also raised. It's got that like shine to it as well. Main board, also beautiful. You know exactly where to put everything. Just when you pull this board out, you know exactly what it looks like or what, what this and where everything goes. Just by like, oh, okay, well obviously these are gonna go here. Now you don't know the exact full setup, but it becomes very clear with how they make their games. It's very similar. It's like how Stegmaier does his games in a lot of ways. You kind of know what the game's gonna look like when it's fully set up and where all the pieces are gonna go. Same thing with Tabula Games. They do a very good job of illustrating that. Then you're gonna have a bunch of these boards here. These are going to be the era boards. They give you all the information you need. Huge, big player references, which are very nice. These games take up a lot of table space. That's just how they function. So you have to have table space to play Isaiah and Mistea. But they're not, uh, I say it's probably a little bigger than Miss Thea. Regardless, it's got a bunch of miniatures that come with it. It's a very nice little bag here as well. Probably not as nice as the first bag I showed you today, but very nice regardless. Cards are very nice, as well as all of the tokens are very nicely cut. And uh, they show you know exactly what the differences between all the tokens are. The bases that illustrate the different characters that you'll be playing with and whose characters are going to be whose. And then like I said, to show you here, these are all the miniatures in the game. There's a ton of miniatures. You're going to have a ton of choose from. There's a bunch of monsters you'll be dealing with throughout the game. This is an area control style game, but they did a very good job with these guys here. Very, very impressed. High quality high detail they always do a good job in tabula games as far as making their miniatures go and the quality of their components i'm a big fan of these guys i think that a lot of their games are very very cool very very interesting and i think i say on is probably going to get one of my top games of the year i'm gonna have to play it a couple more times first before i fully cement myself on that opinion but from what I've played via the prototype and how these guys have come out and everything, I'm very, very impressed. And they did a great job. Has all the information on the front, on the sides, and then on the back of the box. It also does an excellent job. It gives you a bunch of the artwork, which is very nice as well. It gives you what the board layout looks like, all the characters, it gives you a little bit of uh, ex explanation how the game plays and all the components overview, which is nice. And I don't think it needs any other information because it's all over the box otherwise. But yes, Miss Thea, very, very, very nice. Very, very good job. I say on. The last game we're talking about by Tabula Games, this one here plays two to five players as well, and they all both, both basically take 90 to 120 minutes. Comes with beautiful content. I'll just show you one of the rule books here. Has all the illustrations you'll need, as well as numbered setup, a full board illustration of how the game is set up, and just goes into beautiful detail. There was only one super small nitpick I had before even playing this game, is one of the characters in this game is, is like a half of a character, and that's because it attaches to another one of those main characters. And I'll show you when we pull it out. But yes, the rule book is very, very beautiful. The board looks just like Miss Thea, but it plays differently, very, very differently. It has front and back as well. So as you can see, beautiful board. It fills up the entire table. It's really, really nice. Really, really high quality. The player boards as well have the little cutouts so you can place your, you're gonna be placing your different machinery that you're gonna be building, as well as you'll be making your own unique characters in the game. And they all fit in the spaces. You'll see where they go once you open up this one. This is probably a little less intuitive than the other game, Miss Thea, but it does a good job. It also comes with the fall conflicts kit for Miss Thea, which means that you can play, you can put this this game, I say on, and Miss Thea together and play a whole different game. 
So you're gonna get three games for two, which is really cool because it also comes with components and a rule book in here as well. Um, without spoiling too much, but yes, it does come with like some, some extra stuff, which is cool, right? Uh, then of course, you're going to have the main board, which functions a little bit like Miss Thea, as far as all the pieces and where they're going to go. It doesn't look as, as obvious in this one here, but it's fairly simple once you understand it. Player machinery. There's going to be a huge monster that goes around the board that you're going to actually be pulling pieces out of it. High quality miniature, really nice little stones you'll be placing in and pulling them out because it's actually part of the game and it functions very well for the story. And of course, high quality cards, the, the standard gems you would see at like Amazon and whatnot, and then a bunch of really cool miniatures. These miniatures are high quality, just like this. They are very, very well done. And of course, some crazy little, what are these guys? They're like, like aliens. So they're going to be placed on the map that you have to deal with. When you, when you fight them. And here, I'm gonna show you this. This is one important thing I didn't notice. You pop this little guy off here and you can stick this in here. There's only one place in the rule book that's illustrated, illustrated. So it took me a while to figure that out, but now you know. So now you'll be aware <laughs> that is that is what this character does. Basically when he gets hurt, he loses his armor or she loses her armor and she becomes kind of naked. So regardless though, really, really high quality game. All the components are very well detailed. All the miniatures are nice and colored and very easy to tell the difference between the colors of the characters, as well as where to put everything. This one does a pretty good job. It's probably better than Miss Thea as far as where you need to put things. Let's see if I can actually put this like that, like that. And overall, an exciting game. This is beautiful as well, illustrated very, very nicely. It's got the different pieces that are not only upscale, but also has that glossy finish. And then on the back of the box, once again, has a pretty good idea of what you can see on the game. Could probably use a bigger board, I suppose. All the different miniatures, the story of the game, and the components does a great job. Feels just like Miss Thea. And they both have, they're in the same world, but they play differently. And they're both connected in more than one way, which is really, really nice. The so Tagline Games did a very good job of these. But these games, Miss Thea and Iseon. So if you're interested in any of these games and you want to take a look after the campaign, these games are all now available for purchase, go ahead and hit the link down below in the description and you can see for yourself the high quality of these games. All of them have been better than their prototypes, obviously. Very, very well done. Illustrated beautifully. I was actually, none of these games like normally some of my other after the campaigns, are, I was like unhappy about how they came out. And these all did an excellent job. Obviously some have better components, and not better, but um, more, more high quality components than others. And that's probably gonna be based on budget and choices made. But overall, all these games would be a solid buy for any of you that want to pick up any of these games that you see. All right, thank you so much for watching our after the campaign video. We've got a couple more of these to produce, probably be producing one of these a week until I get all of these caught up. It's got a lot of games to show you, but do go ahead and take a look in our playlist here to see the rest of the after the campaign videos. And don't forget to check out our other playlist, Callie's Corner, we'll be having her produce more content. You'll get to see some of her reviews coming out as well as some interesting new informative videos. So thank you guys. All right, check out the website on filthygamer.com. We're making it, revamping it. Tons of new stuff headed your way. Hit up our Patreon and go ahead and hit up our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play games just like these ones down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.